if you like the video subscribe check out my other ones give me a like give me a thumbs up whatever you can to keep these things going um, talking about uh, an email that I just got somebody had just sent me a message pretty long in-depth message uh, what do I think about governing bodies controlling sparring wanting to make martial arts illegal making certain kicks and techniques illegal and um, full force kicks to the head things like that and sparring how hard should you spar so those are all some pretty complex questions because I know that as a martial artist and a former professional fighter that you need to get hit not extremely hard your partner doesn't need to be trying to hurt you and hit you so hard that they're hurting you but you should get popped that's part of the conditioning um, I had a guy who came in the other night and literally from the outside uh, saw one of my guys who has special needs looking at him and the guy literally came up and wanted to fight him tough guy right the guy tell me oh yeah bro I'm good I'm good uh, he literally wanted to fight someone who was mentally handicapped um, and I should have just beat the shit out of him, but I didn't. But um, the guy was in pretty good shape. You know, the guy was uh, pretty intimidating. He's got something going on mentally and uh, obviously got some balls. If he walks into a martial arts gym and wants to start calling people out immediately, uh, it shows that he's got no respect for you. But uh, for anyone up there, and he certainly believes in himself, so the guys who refuse to spar, and I have some, uh, and I pointed this out afterwards, uh, I've got uh, people who refuse to throw punches, and they think that somehow that's doing so much good, and they're making so much progress, and all it would take is a guy like this punk mm -hmm. to hit you one time and your lights are out, because you've never been hit, you don't know what it's like to get hit, you refuse to spar with people, you refuse to spar hard and put the effort in that needs to be put in, the sweat equity, the blood, the sweat, the work. Um, so it really made me mad. Um, one, that this guy came in and he wanted to threaten someone with special needs. Two, that he, uh, that the other guy is the one that I'm talking about, refuses to throw punches. Um, it's, uh, you know, you refuse if you're telling me well I'm not gonna do this because okay then you shouldn't be sparring you know um, because you're gonna change the rules for everybody other people can't spar with you if you are refusing to do what is required if you want to make up your own rules and say well I'm only gonna do it this way if you're gonna pull punches you know then guys have to uh, they have to be more cautious, uh, cautious and they have to go softer and they can't counter punch because you're leaving your arms in the air and, and these people know this but they refuse to change it they refuse to and that kind of a person would get injured like that from this punk who came in the other night um, and he would have no problems uh, hitting you while you were down attacking you because that's his mindset. His mindset is that he wants to come in and prove a point. He wants to hurt people. He wants to show people how much of a badass he is. Um, so he doesn't have an exercise the same respect that everybody else in a martial arts gym does. So when it comes to kids, uh, it's a different story. Now, Taekwondo, I believe in kicks to the head. Uh, medically speaking, there have been a lot, there's been a lot of discussion on this over the years. And because of parents complaining, and I believe it's truly because their kids just aren't as good as other kids. So they make a big stink and they don't want people kicking their kids in the head because their kids aren't that good, they can't do it back. So they make a stink and um, the Taekwondo community has changed those rules a few years ago. I think that that is absolutely wrong. Um, I, I believe that the kids, that's what separates Taekwondo from karate, first of all, because now all you have is a karate tournament and uh, makes Taekwondo no different or actually inferior to karate style sparring. So I believe that kicks to the head are necessary. Secondly, 
medically speaking, we know that things like MMA and boxing do more long-term damage to kids uh, as far as brain trauma than Taekwondo does. An occasional pop to the head with control is not the same as 50 or 60 uh, medium-sized pops to the head uh, from a boxer or a kickboxer or MMA guy who's popping you constantly over and over and over. Um, that leads to traumatic brain injury. Third, we know that the plates of the human skull don't actually fuse together completely until a person around 25, 26 years old. So that's another reason why there shouldn't be a lot of hard trauma to the head all the time. Um, because studies have shown that this does lead to long-term uh, traumatic brain injury. And here in Hawaii, a lot of parents under the misconception that somehow it won't happen to their kids. Now, do I believe that any kid should be involved in boxing and kickboxing uh, when they're really young? No, not, not in uh, full contact sparring, absolutely not. I believe that as teenagers, they can start entering that environment, but uh, 12 and under, they need to really be regulated. Um, and I believe that there should be head contact for Taekwondo, but I believe that it should be controlled contact. Um, and as it is now, it's like, oh, no contact, no contact. So I believe that there should be contact. Um, the adults, you need to get hit once in a while. And how hard should you spar? 50% is good. I mean, 50% effort. And when I say that, there's always one or two guys and they wanna throw the wildest, hardest spinning back kick possibly and say, oh, I was just trying to throw it fast. No, you weren't. You know what you were doing. Um, and you don't have to throw it wild and hard because when you become really good with techniques like that, like the jump back kick or the spinning back kick, when you become really good with it, you can throw that thing with minimal effort and you can fold people up like a, a Walmart lawn chair. Just that easy. So it doesn't need to be wild and hard and forceful. Um, uh, so I, I believe that sparring with adults should be done 50%. And 50% would give you a pretty good workout and let you experience what it's like to get hit. Especially if you're getting popped repeatedly. Um, without the fear of long-term injury or getting in concussion or anything else. You might get a bloody nose or a popped lip or something like that, but uh, that would be about the extent of it. I also believe that you need to wear your headgear and sparring gear. Uh, guys uh, will always come in and it's usually the same guys, oh, I forgot my shin guards. Oh, I forgot my headgear. Oh, I didn't bring it. Well, if you're kickboxing, that shit should be with you every day. You should always have it with you because that's just part of your gear. There should be no, oh, I left it at home because I didn't know. Um, you should be planning on it every day. And the same people that I talk about that do this, I've already told them dozens of times, so they know what they're doing, they know when they're doing it. Um, they're just disregarding my instruction is all they're doing. But uh, when I'm telling people to spar, and you're sparring with somebody maybe that you don't know or they're reckless, then you need to spar with enough strength and effort to make them question whether or not they want to continue. And that's the only way they're going to respect you. Now, these a lot of people who want to fake throw uh, punches and kicks and pull them at the last second and act like, man, I really got you. Oh, I could have hurt you. That's bullshit. Just bullshit. And you're not doing anything to help anybody. And you know it. Your partners know it. You're just not. But um, the problem is when you are confronted with that person, whether it's in the ring or outside self-defense situation, and you've really got to pop somebody, you know what your brain recalls immediately? Your involuntary response is, okay, throw a punch at this guy, but not really hard. Pull it. That's what your brain's going to do. You don't automatically say, well, man, I can turn this switch on if I need to. Uh, that's psychologically, that's been proven for decades that that doesn't work. You don't rise to the occasion, you fall to your lowest level of competent training. Bob Smith, out.